Hi everybody, my name is Jennifer Sir. I am a primary visual arts and media arts teacher in Australia. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create an Australian First Nations Dreamtime story using media arts in Canva. Firstly, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country before we start. We acknowledge the traditional caretakers of the land in which we work and live, the Bulanjong clan of the Bundjalung Nation, and recognise their continuing connection to land, water and community. We pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging. Uh, before we start, I thought I'd uh, just fill you in on my teaching career. Um, I've been an educator for 30 years. 21 of those years was in the early years with uh, prep to year three. Uh, four years I've been teaching middle years. Um, and I've always been the coordinator of visual arts um, at my current school for 15 years before actually going full time into visual arts. Uh, I then this year have delved into that media arts in which I've always had a connection to because um, of my love for, you know, learning about new things and Canva was really one of those that uh, sparked that interest into the media arts and the love of using the software that they have. I've also been in private schools uh, for the whole of my teaching career um, in Queensland. I'd also um, like to give you my Canva creator journey. Um, I thought it'd be important for you to understand how I've become a education Canva creator. Um, I've been lucky enough to have a mentor and advocate for my Canva journey. Uh, 12 months ago, my friend Joe Muirhead suggested that I should apply to be a Canva educator because of my experience in the early years and teaching for 30 years, as well as my experience with visual arts. Um, and she has supported me through my application process. She um, then has guided me in any way that I've ever needed for um, creating elements or suggestions for um, editing and so forth. Um, and she's actually one of the two canvassadors that is um, found in Australia, which is a really great thing for me and for Australia. Um, she's been a Canva education creator for four years. Um, and recently she's just um, actually presented at the ITSI conference in Denver. Um, and she has, um, you know, such a wealth of information for me. So Canva is a really great side hustle for uh, as a teacher. Um, and it's a, it allows me to share my 30 years of experience. Um, and it's also improved my practice with my presentations in the classroom. And it's, it's great professional development. Um, you know, it, it allows me to make my lessons even more um, professional looking, exciting for the kids, up to date. Um, and it, it's just a, a really good platform to create many wonderful things within the classroom. So the unit summary in short is that uh, students will basically have a look at the world of media arts and the various facets of media arts. They will learn different types of camera shots um, and it will enhance then their visual literacy skills. Uh, they will delve into the art of storytelling by looking at Dreamtime stories and they'll have to conduct some research in this because not all students really fully understand what Dreamtime stories are or even what the word dreaming means in First Nations culture. Um, they will then bring their um, understanding to life by using Canva and they will also create four, a minimum of four slides. I did allow them to do more if they needed but uh, really, we tried to look at just four slides and we looked at um, camera shots and how those camera shots can be utilised within their creation. The AI art part was really for creating backgrounds, which I will show you later on in the presentation. Uh, we went a little bit step further and we looked at how animation can be used um, to create depth and the motion within that storytelling that digital arts requires. They'll then at the end of the presentation, they will present it to the class, um, just explaining what sorts of media art elements that they have recreated um, to then finally critically uh, look at and reflect on their creation they've made. 
So really, what is Australian Dreamtime Stories? It's um, a really tricky one to explain to students. Um, for example, even just last week, I was uh, talking to Year Ones and we were talking about, well, what's Dreamtime Stories? And they just said, it's something that you have a dream about. Um, and, you know, essentially, it, it's it's not just that. It, it's a part of First Nations culture that's really significant to them. And... Um, they need to try and understand that it's a belief system that First Nations people have about creation, about how things happen, about things how uh, for them has developed over years and times and thousands of a 60,000 year old history of a culture. Um, so it's really um, hard to um, explain exactly, but in a nutshell, like I've got here, um, that it is stories that are really crucial to their heritage um, and that these narratives uh, create a foundation for their spirituality and cultural understanding. Um, the dreaming represents the time when ancestral spiritual beings were formed creation. These stories were complex narratives about creation of the land, flora and fauna, the laws and the customs that form their um, ancestral spirits, beings and creations. Um, these stories weave complex narratives. And, and, you know, that's the thing, they are complex narratives. So really we looked at um, just a few because if we went into all of them, we could have been there doing weeks and weeks of research. So we kind of just really focused on just a few and the ones that were kind of oh, are, are simple to understand or for children to really find a little bit maybe a bit more realistic, to be honest. Um, they um, also looked at how there were artistic forms within those stories. We looked at paintings, we looked at drawings, we looked at examples through dance even that these Dreamtime stories are created um, just so that they could understand um, uh that the necessary element that dreaming is maintaining a sense of identity and continuity of those um, practices for First Nations people. Uh, I thought I'd also go over, especially for those that are viewing um, from Australia, the Australian um, curriculum content descriptors and achievement standards that were focused on for the piece. Um, Two components, basically in a nutshell, for the media arts is responding and making. Uh, so in responding, students will explore how First Nations Australians use visual arts to communicate their connection to and responsibility for country or place. In the making component, they're going to experiment with a range of ways to use visual conventions, visual art processes and materials, use visual conventions, visual arts processes and materials to create artworks and communicate ideas, perspectives and or meaning. And they will share and or display artworks and or visual arts practices in an informal setting. So the lesson breakdown for the media arts piece was this. There was uh, five weeks allowed for this. Um, however, you can see in the middle there, I've got for lesson three and four, um, you really may not only need one week to complete that part. Um, but firstly, we looked at the introduction of the Dreamtime stories. We researched various stories and their meaning. We also discuss, discuss what media arts is and how we would use it to create a Dreamtime story in Canva. We then went on further to look at a storyboard um, for the camera shots. And then I demonstrated how to use AI images in Canva and how to create those backgrounds using AI. Uh, then they had that time to create. And here is where I said, this could be one week, but it could you may need to allow for two weeks um, where they would create, they would edit, and then have a practice for the final week where they were going to do their presentation um, for the performing component of their piece to the class. So as I spoke about before, Dreamtime stories or the dreaming um, can be a complex um, topic to discuss with students only because it is um, difficult. Um, but 
I gave them links. This is one of the links that I gave them to watch. We did watch it as a whole um, group, but I did have this on our learning management system where they could go then and watch this again to have that understanding of what Dreamtime stories really meant um, and, and the importance of it in Aboriginal culture. So this was one link, uh, YouTube link that they watched prior to beginning um, just to get a little bit of deeper meaning for them. Uh, next, I then had these links for students to look at. Um, these were three of the Dreamtime stories that I felt were probably the easiest for them to understand. Of course, they were able to choose whatever Dreamtime story that they liked. Um, and there were even some that I had never heard of before. Um, they were the Rainbow Serpent, which is about creation of the land. Um, how the birds got their colours, um, and then Tiddlick the frock. Now, the great thing about Dreamtime stories is that there's all there's a moral to all of these, really. Um, so there's there's a learning opportunity there. Not only that it's giving uh, the belief systems of First Nations people, but it's also giving us um, stories and backgrounds and opportunities to discuss morals and and why the animals did what they did in um, how the birds got their colours and so forth. So really good opportunity there as well. So here you can see that I've gone into Canva and we're going to be creating a presentation or 16 by 9 is the ratio you need to choose. We then go down to the apps and we're going to type in magic media. You can actually see mine down on the left hand side already but they may not have it on their screen yet, so you need to put it in. To create the AI art, you need to give the AI some prompts. So here I have said um, Australian bush, sunset, gum trees, thinking obviously, um, watercolour style. You can give different styles if you'd like for the creation. Um, and then I said detail. Now, Magic Media will create four different images and the students then can create, decide which image they'd like. If they don't like any of them, they can ask it to regenerate. Here I like the bottom right one, and there you can see where the generate again sign is or button. I'm gonna choose the bottom right one, put it over to my presentation, go down to those three little dots and do set image as background. And then it just goes to the dimensions of that 16 by nine. After that, um, then they go into the elements part of Canva and then they type in what, part, what animals they'd like or other features that they'd like in their piece. So um, we've put birds. I did stress to them that they need to be Australian birds. So I listed, I actually had to get children to research what Australian birds were, but if you put it in, obviously here are some Australian birds. So look, I've chosen this one because it has got that watercolour um, component. Um, and then look, I put it into that um, piece and it actually looks like it should be there. We also talk about perspective and size and proportion. Um, that the birds, if they are close up, we've got that close up shot. If they're farther away, they're giving a wide angle shot. Um, and then you can duplicate. So we're duplicating the um, parrot lorikeets here that are flying across the screen. Um, have a look at a few other birds and we're actually going to do some of those um, camera shots now. So I'm obviously here just deciding which other birds that I'm going to choose. Thing we're going to think we're going to uh, put another lorikeet in here and we're going to make the lorikeet more of a close-up shot so that it's um, at the front of the piece. So we're creating and continuing to create that depth. Um, after that, we then need to start getting into um, uh, putting in any other elements. So here I've got um, some bottle brush. A bottle brush, of course, is a tree. Um, this would normally be as a bush. It's not normally like this in the uh, in any area of Australia. But if I want to turn it, I can do that flip and I can turn it going the other way. That's another part of the media arts piece that you can teach them on Canva. And then we're just getting more for flora and fauna that we can use to add into the piece as well just getting them to continuing to build. So you're not just got that AI background that you're continuing to build 
um, the piece so that it's a little bit more interesting than it was. Now, this is an ibis in Australia. We commonly call these bin chickens because they uh, scour our bins and scavenge through there. We're going to animate the bin chicken or the ibis. So we create a animation and we just move it wherever we'd like it to go. And then we've created an animation. It's that quick. Um, you can use other parts of the um, animation feature in Canva where uh, they actually animate it for you. There would have been some buttons just below where I had done that there. Um, I'm adding in, oh yes, we've got, making it a little bigger here at the back and I'm actually sending it behind that lorikeet because I didn't want it there at the front. Um, we can even add some other elements, not just animals, obviously. Um, here I'm typing in clouds so that we're putting some clouds in there, um, again, to add a little bit more depth and um, interest to the piece. And we'll just put them sort of there at the front or even behind the tree. You can't actually go put it behind in AI because it is the background of the piece. But I'm actually going to animate these using some of those Canva um, uh, animation animations. So I've actually used the fade so it fades in and out. Um, and um, then there's a piece. So let's have a look at it then. Um, after that, we'll uh, see how it looks. And here's the presentation. And that's very simple. You can add a whole lot more to that if you would like. Now we're going to have a look at some of the examples that students created. Um, so this first one here, we've got the rainbow serpent where rainbow serpent was going around and creating different um, parts of the land. So this next one is Tiddly the Frog. Um, Tiddly basically swallows all the water because he's greedy, there was a drought. The animals tried to get him to laugh. You can see that there's music being added to this one, so they've just got another element in their design. Um, and then he sort of spews all the water out um, to give them back because the eel makes him laugh. So this next one... The next example is how the birds got their colours. So here we've got that AI background moving um, clouds, a moving bird. The birds were all black. Then the bird went and stabbed its foot on a thorn. This is their example of a thorn. And again, another AI. Blood went everywhere. Um, the birds, the blood then went on all of the birds and that's how they got their colours. And then you can see that there's the birds with all their colours. It's a really good example of this one. So finally then, students um, presented their media arts piece um, to the class and they did this on the interactive whiteboard within the art room. As part of their presentation, they narrated the Dreamtime story that inspired their piece. After the narration, they then took a few moments to explain their artistic process, how um, that, that, that story was translated as a media arts piece, and they discussed also the challenges that they faced and how they overcame them. Um, some of the parts, like you would have seen in the Tiddalik, the frog, because Tiddalik was trying to have the water all come out of its mouth. Some of them are like, well, how am I going to do that? I can't, you know, and it's just problem solving. It's a wonderful opportunity for them to learn that. Um, after that, they took a few moments um, to uh, then discuss with the chat class any opportunities to ask questions. Um, they asked them to give feedback from the class and they were encouraged to think about their storytelling and how its connection between media arts and the Dreamtime story helped with their presentation skills. Um, they then also looked at areas of strength that they felt that they had um, and that was then done without just speaking in front of the class. That was done privately um, in the learning management system as they did a little bit of responding for me um, afterwards. So really, how can you use this within a library setting? So I'm sure that you could think of a lot of different ways that you could use this sort of um, a format to help students that you teach. Um, but some of the things that I came up with was that students could do book reviews and uh, 
do it in a media arts form. They could do a book week shortlisted books that I know that in Australia we've got book week coming up at the moment um, and this would be a great way to, short, way to shortlist book week books. Um, to retell stories, of course, just in the way that I have with Dreamtime Stories. Uh, other genres that could be retold, um, it could be historical events, it could be influential figures. Uh, lots of those sorts of ideas would be great in this format. Um, and lastly, I was thinking uh, that linking library content to class content for with inquiry units, for example, so that uh, library is just not an isolated sort of subject. Um, I thought those would be really good options. Uh, so next, uh, this is uh, my... Uh Canva education page. I'm known as Gemma Lua. Um, I have been, like I said, doing this for about nearly coming on 12 months. Um, and I've got about roughly 500 um, pieces there um, that content that you can go to and use ranging from early years content to visual arts to media arts. Um, uh, within there that anyone can use. I also will create anything that anyone would request that I, um, that you might like. Um, so uh, follow me there and um, contact me if you'd like me to help you out with anything. Lastly, I'd just like to share my socials with you. Um, so I have two different Instagram um, pages that I have. One is Mrs. Sir's Art Room, which is probably more visual arts focused and the media arts component, um, where I talk about, you know, all the things that are going on in the art room at the time, whether it's visual arts or media arts and anything sort of teacher-like that just goes on in our world. Um, and then the other one that I've got is um, my Gemma Lua page, which is my Canva creator um, page with content and different ideas on there. Uh, you can also contact me on my email, which I've listed here on this page. Um, and I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thanks very much for tuning in. And I hope some of these ideas and the things I showed you were helpful to you. Have a great year. Thanks. Bye.